Okay, we left off Chavdal and Mitbeis. Half point on the page. He called Eno Visimo. The master hits the slave in the eye and he blinds the, blinds the slave. Al Ozno Vachorsho hits him on his ear and he causes him to lose his hearing. Every judge in Bethlehem favors. Slave is freed. Right? Shane the iron. This iron, the air, also causes him to lose his hearing. What did you say? No, it's, 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 not, it's not noticeable, and you can't, yep. how do you prove that someone can't hear? You can prove someone can't hear. If you scream in his ear, he doesn't move. Doesn't, doesn't. I know, but he's trying not to hear. He doesn't okay. Okay. Negadeno, what about, he goes and he does something, he doesn't actually directly come in contact with the eye, he does something near the person, mm -hmm. let's say he hits the wall and makes a sound mm -hmm. and he startles the person in such a way that the startling of the person causes him to lose his eyesight. Such a thing. Or a super bright light. No, no. The light shines in his eye, first put, takes a laser and blinds the person. Right? So what is it? No, let's say a person... He turned, I put a light on, right. and the person turns his head. Yeah. Turns because he's attracted to the light. That's, that's, his, that, that's his action. That's his action. But we can talk about that. The person has weakened eyesight. What about I weaken the eyesight? And let's say I weaken it, he has weakened eyesight, and then I do something <laughs> which he loses even the weakened eyesight. Because Morris speaks about different cases. person goes and hits him in the tooth, in the mouth, and the tooth is loosened. Although it doesn't function as well as originally, but he still could chew it. But it, the, the loose, it does not go out. We'll discuss all these cases. Negadeno veino roe. He does something near the eye, which causes him to lose his eyesight. So we're told this is causality. Maybe causality. We'll see it's less than causality. It's less. Keneged osno veino shomea. person goes and... Uh, does something near his ear, and as a result of that noise which he makes, he's not a, he loses his hearing. Now, so is going to ask a question. So it seems to be, it has to be direct, it can be indirect. If there's direct impact to the eye or to the ear, then you directly cause him to lose his hearing and his eyesight. But if you do something and it's causality, then not. We took him like what we call Groma. Omer of Shaman Ravashi Lememro. So Rav Shaman says to Ravashi Lemem. So evidently from here it's indicated the Kola Lap Komu. That sound is not considered an action. Although the sound caused him to lose his hearing or his eyes because he was startled. That's not sufficient. You have to have a physical contact with the person. Sound is not physical contact. Has is a uh, opera star, and he has such a powerful voice that when he reaches a certain note, he shatters a window. He's a mazik. We can see in a moment. He actually he broke the window. He broke the window with his voice. He's a damager. So we see that the sound, the voice, is di directly attributed to the person. It's his action. So if the voice is the, well, the sound that he makes, so over here, if he lost his hearing or his eyesight because of the sound that was made. So why, why should he not go out free? That's considered direct. We'll see in a moment. We'll see it, but the is going to ask a question, question similar to the opera star. We'll see what it did. The Gemara compares the opera star to, to a chicken, to a rooster. A rooster puts its head into a, uh, into a glass vessel and starts crowing in, in the vessel. And the sound of the crow is so intense, he bursts the vessel. 
right? It's considered it's considered a, a mazik that your your bird destroyed the vessel, right? So the 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 the, the crow of the rooster and the opera star put them on the same plane, okay? We'll see. That a, a roost put its head into the in, inside of a glass vessel. The tokabo and start it began crowing within the glass vessel. The sheep broke, and as a result of its crowing, it broke the the vessel. Mishalim nezuk sholim. The owner of that bird has to pay full full damages. We'll see. Now, it's interesting. Bava Kama, if a person takes a stone and throws a stone, what's that called? You're, and, he, and he causes damages. He's, he's a damager. Why? Of course, that's called kocho. Your power, the person. You and your power is the same. You shoot an arrow, God forbid it kills a person. The person's a murderer. The person's full on. Don't shoot the arrow. Because shooting the arrow, person pulls the trigger on a gun. And the bullet goes, kills the person. He's a murderer. What? Why is he a murderer? He actually plunged a knife into the man's heart. It's, you caused the bullet to fly. So it's your power behind the bullet. Right? But we say, Koho, your power is you yourself. Your power is behind <laughs> the stone. It's behind the apple. Right? If we are liable. What about, we speak about your animal goes and damages. Why are you liable for the damager? For your animals and damaging, it's called momen hamazik. It's a chiddush. You know, maybe your mazik, your damage is one thing, but if your animal damages, maybe you're not liable. It's called momen hamazik. Your 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 possession, your asset, is causing the damage. So the, it, the of course the Torah says that you have responsibility. You're responsible to your to your asset. Therefore, if your asset causes damage, you have liability. Expect. You're talking about uh, you have an animal that's a moat, a gora, or you have an animal which naturally eats, naturally eats, and you don't watch your animal goes and wanders into somebody else's property and eats of its eats of the fruits or the vegetables. You have full liability because you should have been watching your animal, and your animal did a, what it naturally does when it's exposed to food it eats or vegetation it eats. So that's called you have a chiv shmira. You have an obligation to be responsible to watch your animal that it shouldn't cause damage, right? But over that's called momen hamazik. Your asset is causing the damage. What about if it's koach of the momen hamazik? It's the power of the asset that causes the damage. An animal's work walking, and it kicks up stones. As it walks, stones fly from under its feet, and the stone flies and breaks a vessel. Right? Are you, are you liable? There it's not momen hamazik. That's the koach of your momen. It's the power of your asset. Do you have liability? Said Samachlok is Sumchus in the Chachomi. Is it full liability or is it only 50% liability? It's Samachlok, the Rabbonin and Sumchus. Sumchus says you have full liability. Because just as Momen and Mazik, just as by a human being we have the Momen is Mazik, the person is a damager, his power is himself. Identically, you have your asset damages. The power of your, your, of your asset is the asset. Some say no. Same thing. You coat. Other more low. A person has liability regardless. You have cognizant of your behavior. Whatever damages are come about as a result of your behavior, you have full liability. Okay? That's the other more low. Here we talk about an animal. Animal, we don't say uh, that your money is always liable. It's about a case in Bavakamo. You secured a bond, thieves come the bond and they leave the door open. Now the animal goes and damages. So you have no liability. How are you supposed to know? You act <coughs> responsibly. Secured the bond. You weren't aware, right? But, you, but your, your animal is damaging. It's irrelevant what your animal is damaging. Because it's a chidush. Momenam mazik is a chidush. So we have a principle, Ein lechob el chidusho. It's do you help? So, Tumcha says, says it's the same. The power of the animal is the animal. It's power, that its power is only 50% liability. You don't have full liability. That's Hatsi Nezik. 
well, it's a this this web this bright that within the glass vessel is, is going like sumchus. This is going like sumchus, and it crows within it. Misham nezik sholi, but factually, what do we see? That's called kocho. So if that's the case, you create the noise which startles the evid, which causes him to become to lose his hearing, he becomes deaf, or he startled and loses his eyesight from the from being startled. That it should be kocho. We see that sound is 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 a mazik. Right? The, the argument over there is only regarding momena mazik, regarding your asset. But if the person himself, we see it's kocho. It is koach. We're classically in its throwers. Throwers is the power of the animal. Good. Yeah, so why do we call control like a mako there? If someone says something, it's not considered a mice, it's not considered an action. If you remember that quote of the Marvel Bum Matsuya, it says, Losas Mishar Badisho. You're not permitted to muzzle an animal when it eats, when it's threshing. Right? right. It's a love. Mm-hmm. It's a negative command. You receive malchus. So what about if a person, an animal's threshing, and every time it's about to put its head into the food, you scream, and you startle it that it can't eat. You receive malchus. So the question is, your question, we said that, that what speech is not, a, is not an action, so why would they be liable? It's a love shame masa, right? You're violating the love. It's not, it's not being done with an action, right? So Tosa's answer is, the difference is, if... Words bring about an action, the words are an action. action. Cause the startling causes the animal to withdraw, that's an action. You have, you hitch a wagon to a horse and a donkey, two species. Losat or Chamoriach. Permit to work two species. And now the horse and the donkey start pulling the wagon. That's considered, you've worked with two species of animals, you're subject to Malchus. Because the, the, your voice caused, the, caused an action. The horse and the donkey started to pull the wagon. It has to be immediate. Because if there's immediate result of your voice, that, it's exactly what we're saying over here. The voice brought about an action. An action right, over there I testified. Now there's a ruling, this and that. Right. That's something else. No. When it comes to damaging that, no. A person accidentally discussed the case person's a doctor, and he's dealing with a slave's eye, and he blinds him while he's, while he's, while he's, he's trying to remedy the eye. Right? It's done in, inadvertently. I mean, he never intended. We'll see. Or he's a dentist, and he's, he's trying to fix his tooth, and he causes the, the slave to lose his tooth. Right? He's filling a tooth. The tooth breaks under, under the drill. Okay? We'll discuss. He goes free. We'll see it. Bummer of Yosef. Amri Bey Rav. Rav Yosef. It's said in the Bey Rav. In the Bey. The Bey Smesh Rav. Sushet Sonav. Chamor Shen Noar. A horse that neighs. <coughs> and a donkey that neighs. Braze. Neighs and braze. Okay. The Shibru came in. And as a result of, of their sound, they also... They, br- they, they cause vessels to break. Okay, this is going like the Chachomim. Right? Because this is Tzroros is Chachomim. Since it's not direct asset causing the damage, it's the power of the asset, therefore it's only 50% liability. It's not full liability. But we see clearly <laughs> from both positions, whether it's full liability or not, that voice is considered the equivalent of an action. So why over here, when he startles the slave to lose his hearing or his sight, why does the slave not go out free? It's still liability. That's half or full. It's still liability that we're saying. C- correct, correct. Right. If it would not be an action, right. right, why is the owner of the of the of the horse or the donkey, why is he liable? He's not a damager. Omar Lay, so he said he differentiated. Shiny Odom. Cave in the Bardasu Iu Mavasa Nafshe. A human being has control over his mind, over his behavior. You say he was startled. A person is able to control his, his, his reaction. He was startled to the degree, you know, some people, you say, this person is phased by nothing. He's phased by nothing. Other people, they're very sensitive to things. 
and the difference between being sensitive and not sensitive could determine what the consequence of what you're exposed to. So one person, all of a sudden, he hears a clap of thunder, and he's startled to the point where that, the consequence of being startled, causes him to lose his sight. That, that was the impact of being so traumatized by, by the clap of thunder. Another person, he may be frightened, but he's not startled that he'll lose his, his sight or his, or, his power, or, his, or his hearing. So it's the person himself, the way he processes his, what, 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 what he's exposed to, that is, is the cause of, of, of the effect of what it takes place. So therefore it's not attributed to the master who caused the sound. Right. It's the way the person processes the sound. Let's say less mom the public, nobody could argue. It's a sound, a like person takes a jackhammer, an right. explosion. That a, no, a person's eardrums will be, would burst. Impossible. You're exposed to that, you're not, your ears are not covered. It has nothing to do with the human being, right? You cause that explosion, you cause the man to lose his hearing. Or there's a flash of light which is so intense, a, a bomb goes off, a person loses his sight. A person couldn't, right? Even if he, let's say, he would close his eyes. Or he, clo he couldn't close his eyes quick enough. Oh, good. So you cause the person to lose his eyesight. Nobody argues that case. There he's a direct damager. The slave would go out free. That would be like the animal. That would be like the animal. That's like the animal. Kiritanyo, as we had learned. Amavis is chavero. Now we speak about within the A person who frightens his fellow. And as a result of frightening him, there, there's, there's a death. Potu bidini odum chai bidini shamayim. He's absolved from the human, human judgment. He's liable to bidini shamayim. On a heavenly level, he has to, there's an obligation to, there's liability he has to the court cannot convict. But in he has to. Sir, which is the guy I knew him very well. He was a tzaddik person. David Labelle knew him too. David Fink. So he played that somebody played a practical joke on him. It's a, it's a very terrible, terrible, terrible thing. They call him up, Bellevue Emergency Room that God forbid that his son was in an accident and his son, God forbid, passed away. Yeah? What's the joke? Tell me, what are you telling me? That's what happened. They called him up. Of course, it was, it was, it was false. You know, this person thought this was who, he didn't know who it was. So, of course, he, he was shaken up, terribly shaken up, ran down. Of course, he found out the whole thing was, 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 was a hoax. It was nothing. I mean, Person, an elderly person hears such a thing. Person could have a heart attack and die from that, right? In that situation, a person would die. The one who called is that person considered a murderer, right? Our question here. So evidently, it's the way some people. It depends. Everybody would react to be pained, but to what degree will he be pained? That that's that's the person himself. This is you. The, the, the person himself, it's the way he processes that particular information. To what degree do you allow it to affect the person? Therefore, it will be high bidene shamayim. Bidene shamayim demands a murder. If the person died, right? That it's literal this case. Let's say a person is 99 years old. No. But it has to be a mental condition. You understand? It has to be a mental condition. It has to be. It's not. Otherwise, you'll have the same question on this. What about we startle a person? Right? So is, is it subjective? Subjective. Okay. Now, this whole question, what is Chai Bidei Nishamayim? Right? Ketzat. What is an example? Toka Ba'ozno. A person goes and 
he screams in the person's ear and he causes him, causes him to lose his hearing. What about he holds on to his ear? He holds on to the person's ear and he screams in his ear. And he causes him to lose his hearing. Then he's chayiv. So you have to, what difference does it make? If you just scream in the person's ear and he loses his hearing, that's not sufficient to be considered damage. To be, to be liable in court. But if you hold on to his ear and you scream, then yes. What causes, what causes him to lose his hearing? <coughs> is holding on to the ear or is the screaming in the ear? Mm-hmm. So evidently, the holding on also has relevance to part of the trauma. Of course, he himself can't turn away. Of course, being in a position where you can't protect yourself on that level, that means you're, the co- you're direct. That's direct cause. That's direct cause. That's not called indirect cause. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah, you have to explain it. If, if it's the screaming in the air, so what difference if you hold on to the air and you scream, or you don't hold on to the air and you scream? You can just run up hold on. No, no, the right. 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 If you if you, if you you lose you're not in control of yourself, the, the trauma is a greater trauma. Because it's part, partially as that's why he's losing his hearing. So that's why when you hold on to it, you're a damager. The other case, it's considered causality, mm-hmm. right? You, I caused you. Because I have relevance to you losing here, but I'm not. I'm not the one who actually took. Cause, I'm not the damager. No, attention. This has nothing to do with attention. Other mood all of. A person is fully logical regardless of what you can So that because, because he could have, he, it's, he allowed it to come, he, to be, be to himself to be affected. Yeah. You scared yourself. You brought this upon yourself. First, the two cases here, I, I understand the, the, the example of where the slave is self-induced. This one here doesn't seem as if that's the case. One is he directly in the screen and the other, the other is he's a yard away in the screen. No, no, either case. case. What? You're making a differentiation. Oh, oh Zeo, he held to him. No, one he's holding on to him. Closeness, you can be just as close. Just as close. Mm-hmm. One you hold, touching him, the other one you're not touching him. Right, and we're making a differentiation. Right, right, right. So why? the question, well, why should why? it be there? So that, that's, that, that's what we're discussing. Evidently, anybody, if you hold on to a person, the level of trauma is a something per- nobody could deal with. So the way he'll be affected by that scream will cause anybody to lose his hearing. It has nothing to do with it, the way the person's processing it. It has nothing to do with, with his temperament. But if you're not holding on to him, because he doesn't feel bound by the damager, in that case... His reaction to what's happening has relevance to the consequence. And because there's relevance to the consequence, it can't be attributed, fully attributed to the damager. Therefore, it's only Bidei Shamayim and not Bidei Odom. Okay? Now, there's a case where we say that indirect cause, the Mercedes in Babakama, is Chai Bidei, Bidei Nishamayim, Pote Bidei Odom. Right? You cause damage through indirect cause. Right? So, on a heavenly level, divine level you have to compensate the person so there's a discussion what about if you want to seize property you want to seize property the court cannot impose it on the damager but if a person says look if we then you show him you owe me can I seize property it's a it's a shown it's an argument for instance they differentiate like this we spoke about the case of Kim Lehman Dramine we have a few minutes no? okay Kim Lehman Dramine if a person does an action and the action has a, a, a double liability. A more severe liability, a lesser liability. It carries liability in death penalty, and also there's less liability, you're a damager. So the Allah is the court, Kim Le Midrabine, the court cannot rule on the lesser liability, even if you went up for a warrant. Even if the person actually is not going to be put to death, but since the action itself, if all the criteria would have met, he would have been put to death, the court cannot impose the lesser liability. So the question is, what about the damagee or the family of the person who was killed, whatever it may be, could they seize the value of the, of the asset that was damaged? So Rashi says, in Bav- they, could, they could seize it. The court cannot rule on it. It's, a, it's not under the jurisdiction of the court. But if the person chooses to seize the property, 
It's, it's a valid seizure. Of course, the court, the court is, not, is not permitted to enforce it. If the person who's actually, who's obligated, the damagee, has a right to, the person goes on Shabbos, and he goes and he picks fruit from somebody else's tree, and right, he eats the fruit right off the tree. See, he's a damagee, but he's also, he's kotzer, he's reaping, correct? The court cannot convict him on stealing. But actually, the one who owned it, the orchard, his fruit was eaten, he's owed fruit. He seizes that, the value of that fruit is a valid seizure. Would not take it. No, we'll, we'll protect him. We'll protect him. It's based on psukim to be continued. Yes.